Hello and welcome to the 48th tutorial in the SFML 2.1 series. We'll be using the source code from the third tutorial. If you don't have it, don't worry, there'll be a link in the description. We're going to be looking at how to create a class uh, that'll handle update and rendering for your game. Uh, and the reason we're going to show you how to do this so you can create multiple classes for this and each class can handle a separate aspect of your game. So you could have a player class, you could maybe have an enemy class, you could maybe have something to do with the environment, if the environment is moving or interacting. And we do this because as the game grows, you get so much code that it is impossible to maintain it within the main file. The main file is great for just doing some learning and testing stuff out because you can do it really quickly. But when creating proper games, you will want to abstract code out of the main and keep it as minimal as possible. We will cover this process using a sprite, which in a game could be a player that has function for moving, jumping, attacking, etc. So first of all, what we're going to do is open up our project. And what we're going to do is add a header file and an implementation file to our project. So right click, add class, C++ class, and I'm just going to call it player class name and the header on the CPP file that's a okay I'm gonna leave that as it is okay the first thing we're gonna do in here is include the SFML graphics library so graphics.hpp and now we will create a private sprite inside the header so if we just go here do private SF sprite Player sprite and then the SF texture. There it is. Player texture. And the reason you need to create the texture as one, well, the reason you can't just create it locally um, in, let's say, the constructor and then initialize the sprite with it is because the texture needs to exist. If it gets deleted or no longer exists, the sprite won't draw. It will just, it'll just be black. And the last two things to do inside the header is create two public methods for the update and drawing of the sprite. So what we're going to do is void update float dt. dt is the delta time aka we can pass in the frame rate uh, or I mean the difference between frames so we can factor in frame rate what we've been doing over the past couple of tutorials. Then we'll do void draw and this is going to take an sf random window but it's going to take a reference to it, not a local copy. The reason it's going to take a reference to it so we can draw to the render window. And now we'll, if we just go to our player constructor, and what we're going to do is initialize our sprite. So we'll do if stuff that we've all covered before in this series. Seems so long ago now covering these topics. But player texture dot load from file. And in here I'm going to put paddle large.png and in here I'm just going to say handle error because obviously you may want to handle it in various ways. And I'll put player sprite dot set texture and for the text I'm going to put player texture. We will now add the update and draw method. So if we go here and do void layer there it is intelligence colon colon update float dt i like how in xcode if you do colon colon and then you do your method name it brings up the parameters as well and then you can click uh, i think it's show tab and it'll accept the parameter names well, that's just a nice little feature void player colon colon draw and here I'm going to put SF render window ampersand window. What I'm going to do is window dot draw. It's going to be the player sprite. Let's now include our player class into the main and use it. So if we go to main dot cpp, and what we're going to do is hash include player dot h. And now we can create our player. So if we go here and go player, player, we're going to create an SF clock for the frame rate. So SF clock. And inside the what 
I always do that with the Ace of Club for some reason. I'm meant to be a semicolon to end the line. And in here I'm going to do SF time. This is going to get the clocks elapsed time between frames. Don't get elapsed time. Do player dot update time dot uh, milliseconds. Again, you can use a microsecond, second, or millisecond. As long as you keep it consistent, it'll help you reduce errors in your game. Uh, that's one of the keys: consistency. When you're doing anything, really, not just coding, but if, you, if you're consistent with stuff, it'll help reduce problems and errors. So we're going to do clock dot restart dot add milliseconds. Then that can matter if you do restart or add milliseconds for the most part. And then we can just draw our sprite here. So we're going to do player dot draw window. If we run our application now. Hopefully no errors, and we have our sprite drawn. And so we have a few lines in that. You might think it's a long-winded way to do things, but you'll see, obviously, you'll see the benefits when you start adding more functionality. So you might add a method for jumping, might add a method for moving, and stuff like that. Maybe you want to create two players instead of creating all that code again. You just create two player objects. It's that's what's so cool about it. Um, this class can be used as a great foundation for the classes and even as a base class for other objects in a game. A lot of tasks for you to do now, create an overloaded constructor for the player, aka this, and uh, make accept a string for the sprite file, allowing you to specify the image for different player objects, and maybe even taking a couple of flow parameters to set the initial position as well. Also another task is to use the update method to move the player sprite similar to the previous tutorial. That is it for this part of the series. In the next part we're going to show you how to add text to your window. If you have any questions feel free to message us at support at sonarsystems.co.uk. The email will be in the description. You can comment on this video or just directly message us via YouTube. All the required links for the source code will also be in the description. And as usual, thank you for watching and hope you have a great day.